Now let's focus on the form. We'll make some quick changes that will have a great impact. The look of the store's demo in text mode required text, lines, and rectangles to be displayed using screen coordinates. In GUI mode, this is unnecessary. At this point, we could go through and comment out or remove instructions in the code using specific screen coordinates, such as these display at statements. However, to ease the modernization phase of your legacy code, you can keep these statements as is, as they will be ignored by the runtime system when running in GUI mode with a form using the form layout instruction. We'll be modifying our form to use the layout instruction, so we can leave the code as is, knowing the runtime system will ignore these statements. Next, we'll review the customer form layout. The original forms of the store's demo are designed to be displayed on a text terminal. By revisiting the layout, we can enhance the rendering with minimal changes to the code. Here, we're editing the custform.per file, replacing the screen section by the layout section. The title customer form becomes a text attribute of layout. This text will now appear in the title bar of the window. Label and field positions are being adjusted to accommodate proportional fonts. The AO state field size is increased to make room for the button edit widget. In the attribute section, replace the AO field definition with the button edit adding action equals Z state and image equals zoom. This code defines the customer.state field as a button edit widget associated to an action named Z state that will be invoked when the user clicks on the field button. Now we can create a simple toolbar, adding a toolbar section before the layout section. This will declare three toolbar buttons bound respectively to the accept, cancel, and exit actions, which can be handled by program interactive instructions. Now you can recompile the form with FGL form. Note that the dash M argument outputs any errors to standard error rather than creating an error file. Execute the demo program to see the result. Note the new toolbar with three buttons, the new layout of the form fields and labels, as well as the new state field with a zoom button. The button action is not yet available, we will implement the code to handle this action in the next section. Right now, the button edit field is bound to the Z state action, but it has no associated code to be triggered. In order to execute user code when the Z state action is invoked, we need to add some code in the d4cust4gl source. Edit the d4cust4gl file and in the input cust and update customer functions before the after field state code, add the following lines as shown here. We're adding a parameter to the state help function to indicate if the current field value must be checked or not. You must modify the state help function itself as well and add true in the two existing calls. Recompile the d4cust4gl module with FGL comp and execute the demo program. Select the customer menu option to enter the customer form. 
Select the One Add menu option to enter the input instruction and click on the State field button to see what happens. The State List window appears when you click on the field button. For now, the list displays in a static screen array. This does not look as nice as it could, so in the next step, I'll show you how to use a table layout container to improve the display and provide sorting features without changing a single line of business logic. To change the static screen array to a table container and take advantage of the modern display in GUI mode, edit the state list per file and replace the screen section with a layout section, change the title in the curly bracket area to be a text attribute, and we'll apply a style to this window that this form will be opened within. Now you can add a table container, and supply some column headers. Recompile the statelist.perform with FGL form and execute the demo program. Enter the customer form by clicking on Customer, then choose One Add, and then select the State field button. As you can see with a few changes in the .perf file, you get a fully featured resizable list window in which you can move and hide columns and sort rows by simply clicking on the column headers and all without having to add any code. You can now review colors and attributes. Though this is optional, a little work here can really improve the look of your application. Genero uses styles that allow you to override the colors, fonts, and other attributes of any element in the user interface. These styles are overridden, though, by color attributes in the code, so it's a good idea to remove things like attributes magenta from the code, thus allowing the color to default to the system default colors on your client OS and allows you to change global color settings using the Genero Styles file called the 4ST. Other attributes like border, for example, can also be removed since windows will have the normal rendering for your client operating system. Again, the look of a window can be changed simply by using a Genero Styles file. The real advantage of the external Genero Styles file, though, is that it can apply to all programs, giving a consistent look and feel to your system without having to modify each program. Let's take a look at a style file and apply it to this program. In the style file that we'll now use for this program, you can see that these lines make all labels or text on the form appear bold and all data or normal fields on the form appear in dark blue. Now when we run the program, we can see the effects. And with a little more effort, you can see what can be produced. This concludes this video, and in the next video, we'll look at running the same application in the Genero web client.